Uh, hello everyone. Today we're going to look at Yusaku training Camelot. Alright, so in this problem we're given um, an array of squares. So um, an example is a standard 8x8 um, array. So it would basically look like a grid like this. And um, not only that we're given this board, we're also given a king and some knights. And all of those um, objects would occupy one square. Alright, so um, the objects can actually move. So a king can move um, from, from, um, from the black square to each of those white squares. So if the king was at this black square, it can move um, basically up, down, left, right, um, up, right, up, left down right and down left and I'm a knight can jump from this black square to each and any of these white squares or white um white cells I mean All right so um what we're going to do is that we're going to be given the positions of these um of these objects and we're going to try to gather them at one cell and uh, you can basically pick which cell you want to gather them at. And um, basically, for example, if the knight is over here and you choose to move it to this position, this would cost, um, this would take a cost of one. And so would be if you moved from this to this position, it would also take a cost of one. And also when when the king and one or more of the knights are at the same square, the player can choose to move the king and one of the knights together from that point on, and they would move like a knight to basically to the final gathering point. And um, when you move the knight and the king together, this would count as one move. So again, we're going to try to count the minimum number of moves to produce the gathering. All right, so for example, over here, we're given um, eight rows and eight columns. The king is at position d4. Uh, the knights are at position a3, a8, h1, and h8. So um, the best solution would to be gathering them at b5 with knight 1 at a3 moving to b5, which costs one move. Knight 2 moving from a8 to c c7 to b5 which costs two moves and knight 3 um moving from h1 to g3 to f5 to d4 picking up the knight to b5 and this would cost four moves and um notice that the king does not need to move because it's getting picked up at the um, it's getting picked up by the knight, and it's basically staying since um it's getting picked up at d4, which is its original position. And knight, this is knight 4's um, movement, and this would cost a total of the sum of these, which would be 10 moves. Alright, so what we can do here is that um, since you know that the constraints are pretty small, R and C are less than um, 30, I believe. So what we can do, the general idea is that we're going to um, try a possible gathering position. So we're going to try, um, again, basically try uh, setting each square to a gathering position. So then, um, now we just need to, for basically we're just given a gathering position, we're going to try to find the minimum number of moves to move all the knights and the king to the position. So then, what we need to do first is that we need to compute cost for each cost, i, j, x, y, and this would be equal to the uh, minimum distance 
from ij to xy are moving like a knight. Right. So um basically again let's actually look back here. So um moving like a knight means that you would basically move like what's uh shown over here. So then to calculate this we can loop through each ij and we oh and when we loop through this we just do a um abfs from ij right and this is basically a zero one bfs where we're just bfsing from this point to the rest of the grid All right so now that we now that we um found this cost then back to trying uh, um, our gathering positions. Let's call this point IJ. Okay, so let's first assume that there is no king, so we're just moving all the um, all the knights to the to IJ. So then, if that was the case, then then um, this would just be the sum of cost knight uh. I, I X, knight, I Y, two, I, J. So basically, um, it would just be the cost for each knight to go to the gathering position. But now, um, this is basically not the case because we also got a, got a king, and we may also choose for that king. Um or for one of the knights to basically gather with the king first, then go to the gathering position. So then, um, what we're going to do is that we're going to simulate uh, for each knight, um, the, um, we're just going to assume using that knight to pick up the king and then going to the gathering position. So basically, let's do it like this. So for each Knight K. Right. And um now for each knight K, we're just going to pick one gathering position. So let's uh call this gathering position. Position two. Let's call this XY. So let's define this. And we can actually loop through that later. So all right. So over here, for each gathering position x y, we know that actually let's call this um s one equal to the sum of this. So then now this would be equal to s one, or the resulting cost would be equal to s one minus the cost from um n k i k j to the final position since what what we've done is that we have already like um summed it over here so we would subtract it and then we would add the cost from knight i knight j to x and y x and y and then we would also add the cost from x and y to i and j since now that we've um we've gathered at this point we're going to move both the king and the um and the knight to the final gathering position but notice that uh we haven't actually accounted the number of moves for the king to go so notice that um when the king is at this position, it can only go here, here, here. So basically these um eight directions. So then um let's call um let's call uh another array, let's call this cost 
cos k. So cos k i j x y equals to the um min min moves to get from i j to x y with this type of moves and um, if you actually just did a VFS like you have done up here, then you would notice that um, the distance would actually just be the maximum um, would be the maximum um, of x minus i will take the absolute value and y minus j. And um, this is actually because um, when you move like this, Every time you're going to go um basically one delta either to the left or the right. I mean either to the um either like horizontally or vertically. So then the resulting you don't actually have to pre-compute this, you can just um using this formula you can get it in of one time without any pre-computation. So now over here we also need to add the cost from the king i king j and this is actually cost cost king cost king king i king j to the gathering position with the knight so now this is going to be the um, potential answer so now we're just going to answer it's actually very slow answer will just be the min of all these possible um all these possible combinations so now the only thing left is that over here remember we have to define this xy um there's one thing that you could do is that again you could loop through all possible xy in the whole grid but um to make this more efficient the um, you actually don't need to loop through the whole grid for each possible um, pairs of x, y. So let's actually create. All right. Okay, so um, right now, what we're going to do is that, or what we have right now is basically all possible x, y. Or we're going to loop through. And um, okay, I think I spelled that correctly. Okay, so again, x y is going to be the gathering position for one of the knights, or one of the knight and the king. So um, this is what we have right now. So we're going to loop through all possible x y. But um, okay. So right now we know the position of a king. So with this cell. Okay, so this is going to be. Um, let's actually, all right, so, okay, so this is king, king, and let's actually draw this grid out. Okay, let's actually make this a bit more neater. All right. Okay, so let this cell be our king, and let's draw the rest of this out. Alright, so okay, so right now this actually may not be the whole grid, but assuming that this is going to be ki, this is going to be kj, or actually maybe the opposite, this is going to be ki minus two, ki plus two, kj minus two, and kj plus two. And um let me just tell you this quick. So 
we don't actually have to loop through all possible x, y. We only have to loop through this subportion, meaning that we only have to loop through at most um, 25 cells. And um, the observation over here is that, let's just say I have one point. Let this be x, y, okay? So um, you know that the king, or the distance for the king to go over here is going to be the basically the distance over here so um it would just be holy what I just I did over here in green but um if we're meeting over here then it would actually be more optimal for the knight to go over here at this position then jump jump and then go to one of these positions and um this is because the knight generally moves a lot more faster than the king, except in this portion. So that's why we're going to basically only loop through. Basically, we have our x will be equal to from king i minus 2 to king i plus 2 and we will not only loop through our y from king i and king j minus 2 to king j plus 2. And we're just going to loop through. So now we will no longer loop through each possible. We just need to loop through each what we have over here. So now that we um, know which ones to find our gathering point over here, we just need to update our answer over here, and we just need to print our answer in the end. All right, so let's get coding. So, okay, over here. All right. So we're going to be given the number of rows and columns. So int, int r c. So we're going to read r and c. So then we have our position for our knight. So let's call this p. So we have our row and our column. All right, so let's call, since we're actually reading a character in first, but we don't actually want to process the character, we're just going to um, underscore C and underscore R. We're going to read this. And then the position for king would be equal to, um, so we have row first, so this would be R and C minus A plus 1. And this is because we want to use um, uh, one indexing here. So if we just minus one, if C is equal to A, then we would get zero. So we just have to add one to the end. Okay, so now we're just going to do here while we can read in some input. And let's call our, uh, our knights here. So our knights. So while we have this, we would just push back um, R and C minus A plus 1. Alright. So now that we've read, now that we have um, read these, the input, we're first going to calculate cost. So we're going to calculate cost i, j, x, y. Alright, so let's define our cost here. So we have cost n, let's call um, our maximum n, let's call this 35, we don't actually need that much, but let's just define it like that, All right. so first thing we're going to do is that we're just going to set each, um, each cost to a pretty big value, so then for each i from 1 to r, for each j from 1 to c, we're going to basically prep for search, so bfs from ij. So first thing we're going to do is that we're going to set ij, ij equal to, um, equal to 0, since you'll need any cost to get from yourself to yourself. Then we're going to have a queue of point, let's call this queue. We're just going to push ij into this. We're going to do this while we have something in our queue. Let x be our top element. Let's call f be our top element. 
and then we're going to pop it. Okay, so now we need to basically generate all the possible movements of this. Oops, let's actually rephrase it here. And we have this right up here. So let's define dx. Okay, so we have two we have two um two moves going to a delta of negative two, one going to delta of negative one, or two going to delta of negative one. And same thing goes for the positive. Okay, so for negative two, you have one possibility going to negative one, and the other one is one. Negative two, two. Um, negative two, two, and negative one, one. All right, so that's for our dx. So then over here, we're going to loop through each possible. Um, each possible move. So our x will be equal to f dot rho plus dx k. Y would be equal to f dot column plus dy k. All right. So now, if this point is valid, so if x is less than one, or x is greater than r, or y is less than one, or y is greater than column, then we're going to continue. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, we're going to try to update our cost. So uh, basically, if cost r dot c r dot um, this is actually so basically, if the cost from this is plus one is less than cost i j x y, if this is the case, then we can update this. Basically, this would be equal to this. And we're just going to push x and y into the cube. And one more thing, because um, what I use memset here is to basically uh, to set each value to infinite, but I'm not sure if it works on this 4D grid, so I'm going to do here is that I'm first going to loop through each cell. Okay, this is column. I'm just going to set cost ij xy equal to um, pretty big value, so just 29. Alright, so I'm assuming this works, so we will just cut. We just calculated cost, the cost array. All right, so now we're going to loop through each gathering point. So for each i equals 1, 2r, for each j from 1 to c, so we're going to simulate uh, assigning the gathering point to be ij. So first thing that we're going to have is our answer. So answer should be a pretty big value by default. So now we're going to loop through each um, each night. So let's call this cost one. So for each um, for each night, this should be p, right? So for constant p in each night in nights, c one would just add the cost for. Um, for this to go to ij. So that's c1, but we also have to calculate the, um, since we also have to calculate uh, the the distance for the, um, what do you call that, for the king. Yeah, so for the king, we know that by default, the distance would be the, ab the maximum absolute value between king dot row minus i and the and the absolute value between the column minus j. So over here we may also want to update our c2. So then we're going to loop through x from from um, king dot i or king dot column I mean row minus two to king dot row plus two and for each j from king dot column minus two to king dot column plus two. 
but then you realize that this may also not be uh, a valid point. So then we just actually have to add an extra position. So for x from king dot r minus two, x has to be less than or equal to um, king dot r plus two. For each y from king dot r minus two and column minus two plus two. First thing we're going to do is to check if this is valid. So if this is not valid, we're going to skip this. Otherwise, our C2, we will just maybe update it into, um, we're going to have is a uh, negative. All right, so this would be equal to, let's actually look back up what we have before. So here is what we have. So it would be S1 minus. So since S1 is actually taken out, so we already calculated S1. This is actually cost one in our case. So we just need to look at this portion. All right, so then to do that, let's go back here. This would be equal to cost king dot r king dot column so we have to first get to this point for the king or actually i mean for the knight actually for for this knight so you have to first get to this position then we're going to go from this position to to the finer to the final gathering point but then we're also going to add the maximum between for the king to walk to x and y. So this is going to be this value to find over here. King dot r and this would be x and this would be y. And then we also have to subtract the what we have added over here since um, we actually do not want to include that. So minus cost k dot r k dot column i j. Alright, so now that we have that, we would just update our answer to the minimum of C1 plus C2. I um, mean, answer here. At the end, we're just going to print answer, and we're done for the day. Okay, so over here, since um, if I run it with my STDN, this may actually... Um, bug out, so I'm just going to use file IO up here. Camlot.in, alright, in, camlot.out, right, std out. Alright, so we actually don't need to use that, and I'm just going to untie this. Alright, so let's run this. Alright. So this is our input. Oh, okay. So I did not include that. Let's go up here. I also forgot to give him the input. So let's run it. It should print to um the terminal, not the file. Okay, it's compiling. Ooh, okay. Index fifty one, which line fifty seven. Very nice. 57 over here. K dot R, K dot column. Hmm. I, J. So for knights. Huh. Alright, so let's just print. Um, we're going to print the row. And this should actually be a character array and and this thing which which this should be an integer all right whoops all right big boo boo okay, so like that let's so this should print um the what we have so a hey, hey. all right Oh, okay, so I kind of see why. So over here, our R 
which is the row, should actually be an integer since we're given it as an integer here. So it should have been a character, so if it was reading it as a character, there might be some kind of bug as well. Alright, so let's run this. Ten, very nice, that is correct. Let's submit this, so and this is that. Okay. Alright, so let's submit this over here. Choose the file. Um other YouTube. Alright, can I send in? Ooh. I'll put negative values. Okay, so apparently we're getting some negative values here. Let's get our test data. Oh, okay. That's pretty short. It's actually pretty short. Alright, let's go back here. Let's run that. Let's not print to here. Oh, okay, so nice since I actually run with some uh, flags, it auto detects um, some things. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to set this to negative one. Or oh, okay, so I kind of see. So um, over here, let's still set this to one e nine. But then we can just use long longs to get away with this. This is actually not a great idea since sometimes you actually need to conserve some memory, but over here, this is okay. So if we just use long longs, then this wouldn't um, give us some sign overflow. Alright, let's run that again. Oops. Alright, 17, that's correct. Let's submit that again. Go back here. Let's see what that. Ooh. Failed to map segment from shared object. Okay, interesting. So let's actually undo that. Let's change everything back to ints. Maybe we're actually using some too much memory as well. So Get back here, change that to int, and let's figure out a better way to do this. Alright, so notice that since um there's only 30, uh 30, um it shouldn't uh actually so we can just you don't actually have to set this to 1e9, you can just set this to like 1e5 or something. Since that um since it actually shouldn't take that much um it shouldn't take uh, that much, what do you call that, uh, distance or moves to get from one cell to another. So there you go, 17 is correct. Let's submit that again. Okay, All right, so that is correct. So um, we're done for today. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, um, please leave them in the comment section below. Bye.